everyone. Hi. So first of all, I want to start off by saying a big thank you for watching our RVA videos. If you've watched one of them or some of you are very committed and you watch all of them, but we do really uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Now in this video, we're just going to conclude everything together and just give our final review on our time spent on board the RVA. As you may or may not know, we've done a load of separate videos that obviously covers a lot of it, but if there's anything in those that we might have just messed off, that's what we're gonna basically cover in this video. Yeah, but whilst this video goes out, we will be just over halfway through our next cruise. New ship, new company. It's the NCL Prima, which we're so really exciting. excited for, yeah. Uh, we're not gonna tell you where and what we're doing on there. You'll have to subscribe to uh, see all those videos. <laughs> or if you're already subscribed, obviously yeah. stay tuned and that's what content will be coming after the after now. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we might as well just get into this video and then you can start watching the other videos a few days later. Yeah, let's stick with the RV yeah. for now. <laughs> So we did a 14 night Mediterranean cruise. A lot of you tend to ask us who we've booked with and yeah. we say this name a lot of times, but just because we always seem to get the best deals with them. Yeah. And it is a company called Cruise Nation. So, you know, check them out. It's just another option yeah. for you oh, there yeah. if you haven't heard of them before. Um, like say we've used them loads of times now because they, they do always tend to be the cheapest deal that we found. Yeah, pretty much 90 some percent of the time for us it is anyway. So cost wise, the 14 night cruise on the Arvia costs 1,566 pounds for the both of us yeah. for two weeks, which is a fantastic deal oh, really. Yeah. And that was booked about three or four weeks before we went. So it was, it yeah, was last, but quite last many. Because we got back from Alaska. Yes. And then we didn't have anything booked. And then we booked this like like say roughly a month before mm -hmm. something like that. We did notice that the price went up quite a bit. It yeah. just seemed that after we booted about three or four weeks before. Shot up a few days later. And then the last couple of weeks really went yeah, up. Yeah, and then yeah. it sold out. And then it sold out, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now obviously with Pino, tips included, but that was for, uh, we had an inside cabin, saves you some money. Yes. Didn't have drinks package, mm -hmm. saves you some money. We also didn't pay for the select fare, saves you some more money. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> so. I know, I think we covered it in the embarkation video for the RV, but I know some of you do ask like, how do you get such good de yeah. uh, deals? But if you, um, you know, and you do whatever you want, you work hard for your money, you spend it how you like. But if obviously you're having drinks packages and balconies, you can't then be like, well, why, why don't mine come yeah. to that much? Mine's more than that. I've, well, it will be. We roughly worked it out yes. at time of booking. Mm -hmm. And if we had the select fare, a balcony, and the drinks package, that 1566 went up to close to six grand. Yeah, it's amazing. So it soon like quadruples in price. And we don't have the drinks package just because with P&O you can take unlimited, we don't drink alcohol anyway, no. but you can take unlimited soft drinks on. So we took 48 cans of pop in. Yeah. We're always off first thing at the port and we're off all day. Yeah. So we're obviously buying drinks off the ship. And then in the evenings, we, we like water. <laughs> so, you know, we'll drink a lot of water oh, with we'll dinner. Go get a cup of tea with or, the buffet. Yeah, a cup of tea. Or when we go to shows, we'll have a, a Coke or we were having ginger ales and things like that. Yeah. So we just, it's cheaper for us to just pay as we go. Yeah, so that's how we personally yes. save some money. But like I say, it's your holiday. You do it however you like. So it's our third cruise with P&O now. Our first was on the sister ship, the Iona. Which was our first ev ever cruise yep. as well. Yeah, uh, That was to Norway. And then Easter time just, we went on the Britannia. For five nights. For five yes. nights to Rotterdam and Bruges. Mm -hmm. Even though the Iona is the sister ship, there's still some differences on the ship as well. Yes. So we just separate them out a little bit. Which we are going to cover in the next video after this. We're going to do an Iona versus Arvia. Yeah, we get a lot of questions, Because a lot of you say, which one do you prefer? What are the differences? So we're going to cover that in the next video. Yeah. We went from Southampton, as most p and cruises do, unless you either fly to the Caribbean or I think they go from Malta. And the car parking was so expensive through CPS, which is the company that uh, P&O recommend. I think, was it close to... I think it was just over 240 pounds for the two weeks with cps but we parked in the west key shopping center instead uh which is you know a secure car park i think it's about half a mile from the terminal it's not too yeah. far from the ocean terminal 
So we just parked there. It cost £70 for the 14 days. So it was a big difference. I mean, we're happy to do it. Obviously, you know, you do it at your own risk. We feel it's secure enough. Yeah. You know, others might not feel safe leaving the car there, but we're happy to do it and it saves us a lot of money. Exactly. And then we did get Ubers to and from the car park. People have commented, we didn't even think about this, that no. you can drop your bags off first and yeah. then drive back. Next time yeah. we'll drop the cases off, Yeah. Get obviously park up and then we'll walk across to As long as it's not raining. Yeah, as long as <laughs> it's not raining, we'll just walk across and then it's save, saving us another yeah. £10 each way. Eight, 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 £10, yeah, eight, something like eight that. £10 yeah. each way on it's the all Uber, so yeah, plus it gives us a bit of walking to do before we get on and go to the buffet. The buffet. <laughs> The P&O RV is the newest ship in the P&O fleet. I think its maiden voyage was the 23rd of December 2022. Yep. So it was roughly, what, eight months old by the time? Seven months old, yeah, something like that, yeah. eight months old. So it wasn't even, she wasn't even a year old by no. the time uh, when we went on her. So she was, yeah, very, very new. And as it's still, it's maiden season, we're guessing, it did have a lot of maiden season uh, merch on there. We got a mug, it was half price. There was hoodies and t-shirts and coats. Yeah, I think most of them were like reduced as well. So I think they're trying <laughs> to get rid of that. So if you like that as a little memorial token kind of thing, you can get some cheap merch on the ship as well. So we boarded the RV on the 25th of June. Now we didn't realize at the time, the end of June is some Scottish and Irish kids holidays. Yes. We soon found that out once we boarded. It was very busy. Yeah. When you Google RV capacity, it says 5,200 people. There was 5,800 and I think it was 5,860 something people on. Yeah. It was very busy. But then we Googled it and max capacity is 6,200. It's a lot of people on that ship. Yeah. Uh, for us personally, we felt like there was too many people there on was. there. It was trying to carry too many passengers just to enjoy the facilities yeah. on the ship when the ship wasn't in a port it was just absolutely manic on there it was crazy. you couldn't go you couldn't go in a swimming pool we were up very early loads of mornings because we were doing food videos we yeah, were doing we did ship that, tours we? so we were always up really really mm -hmm. early and as we were going around the ship at literally seven o'clock in the morning, people were reserving it, reserving the sunbeds. They say at 10 o'clock, by the time you've had your breakfast and stuff, you go down, I can guarantee at 10 o'clock, you have got no chance oh, of getting you, a sunbed. You could probably guarantee by eight, half eight, you've got no chance of getting a, a oh, good yeah, sunbed. Yeah, exactly. And it, what I didn't like about it on like a sea day was it was a case of, first of all, you'd have to be up at seven o'clock in the morning to get your spot. But then that would have to be your spot all day. Yeah. You couldn't think, well, I'll start off at the back of the ship and then, oh, I'd like to go and try and sit in the bar at the front of the ship, like the adults only bit. You just couldn't get anywhere. No. You had to just stay in that one place all day. You couldn't go and experience other parts of the ship because no. it was just absolutely just manic. And what, yeah. the one day that we did, I think we didn't get off because we had it overnight in Barcelona. We yes. didn't get off that first day I don't think because we stayed on to do some yeah. videos but we thought we'll go down and we'll have a swim in the pool while it's quiet mm. and even then it was still busy that morning there was wanted. a lot of people that stayed on the, and on was, the ship like, yeah. even though the signs are there there was a lot of kids jumping in the pool splashing everybody and you're a bit like I've got this good seat by the pool and I'm just getting <laughs> we soaking getting wet to you. <laughs> we were getting drenched, yeah. drenched weren't we <laughs> those of you and you know who you are who go down and leave a towel there and don't sit on it for four hours Yeah. don't be one of them because it's just annoying. So seeing as the RV is the newest ship, I thought they'd make a bit of effort when you were first embarking. I mean, when you should do on it on. when you get on any ship, but when you first get on the ship, there was just nothing really. There was no nothing special or... I think the first step we did, we literally stood on the ship and there was a guy there, go to your must station. That was yeah. it. I was like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> was you, it. They were like, hello, welcome on board the yeah. RV. Kind of just went, yeah. Can you go do your must station now, please? Yeah. And I was like, okay. Uh, whether we've been spoiled because a month previously to that, we did a princess cruise. Dude, that was amazing. And they really put on like, yeah. welcome on board the ship kind there was of banners thing. Banners everywhere, sail away banners. Yeah. Whereas when we walked on this ship, it just felt like you were getting back on from a port day. Yes, yeah. It, it was, was just literally like that. just that. Apart from you do your muster drill, that was it. So it'd been nice if it was, you know, because everyone's excited that first day of embarkation. Yeah, because there was no sail away party either. No. For some reason, it was done on the third day. Yeah. Because we had two sea days, 
Yes, and then and a day then in port. It's yeah, a bit which random. Is a bit strange. <laughs> and when we first went on the ship as well, we were trying to look in the Horizon magazine to see if they were having like a sail away, sail away party or anything, and we couldn't see anything. So I asked one of the uh, crew members in the Sky Dome, and she was kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, and then we asked like, at reception. Okay. <laughs> uh, and they were like, don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, we just kind of, nobody knew. <laughs> but there was one, like, say, on the third day, but kind of just the moment's gone then. Yeah. I know you're sailing away from your first port, but it's not the start, initial but, start of your cruise. Like, we got back on the ship. Mm. I think we were there till, I don't know, four or five o'clock. Yes. And then we wanted to get back and have a shower because it was red hot and we were yeah. sweating and stuff and then go down for dinner and stuff. So it was a bit of a inconvenience to go and watch the sail away party. So basically overall, there's nothing really special on no. your first day of embarkation, whether that's when you first step on board or in some terms of some kind of sail away party. No. Just expect nothing. No. You, you'll have to make your own fun. And talking about nothing, the app, which isn't an app, it's a website. It's not very good, is it? It's. I think that's all dependent on if you've been on tried other cruise lines. Um, if you haven't, you don't know anything different. Nope. But to us, compared to, say, the Princess one and the MSC one, it's just very basic. Yes, it's literally, it's a website. You don't even download an app. I don't know why they call it an app. The only thing you can do is book a few restaurants. Yes. Like your main dining room, mm -hmm. a couple of the others, and the 710 Club and the Headliners Theatre. Oh, and I think on this one, you could book um, a paid time slot for the Rope Bridge and the escape room escape thingy. Room. Yeah. That's it. There's no message function. There's no map. There's no digital itinerary. Have you scared your cruise schedule? Your like Horizon any, magazine yeah. or anything? It's it's. Because we were pants. caught out a couple of times. We forgot to take the Horizon magazine out with us, and we'd be somewhere, and it'd be like you know if you you know what we're on about if you have cruised with other companies. So we'd be like, what's on? Yeah. It, it's such and such, and we're like. Oh no, we forgot to bring the magazine so out with us. Ask somebody. Like, yeah. Oh, like, you know, they've got one. Oh, you don't, I think they had Could a bit of reception. Borrow? Yeah, but if yeah, you're not by if reception. Yeah, if you're not by reception. But it was a pain because we'd be like, what's on at such and yeah. such now? Oh, we can't look because we haven't got the wares. Normally, on other cruise lines, we've been able to look hour by yeah. hour of everything that's on without having to rely on a magazine. I mean, it's great they've got the magazine option still. Oh, yeah, in yeah. Case you, in case you're not tech savvy, but it is a bit it could yeah just be on there it's not very advanced in terms of of other cruise lines so one thing the Arvia and the iona both do differently than some of the older p o ships is they only have one celebration night per week not per cruise per week yes so we had mm -hmm. two over two weeks which you know i'm not a big fan of dressing up we, we did, did do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, especially on this cruise because it was so hot. Yes. I, you, you, if you watched it, I had to go put my shorts on mm -hmm. <laughs> after we had in the dining room because it was red hot. But that's, you know, personal preference. I know a lot of you like to dress up. So you've got options, especially on this ship because there's different dining venues where you don't have to dress yes, up. Yes, there's a lot more than there was on the Yeah, Iona. so it's better yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. So you've got more variety if you're not a big dresser up, but rather than being forced to go to the buffet <laughs> yeah right so we're just going to cover some of the entertainment and activities available on board the ship now so like we've just mentioned before your app the piano website that you'll use on board the ship only covers the shows in the headliners theatre yep. and the 710 club yes i think there's also the limelight club on there Mate, which is the paid for I couldn't remember. dinner show we didn't do that no, we, I'm pretty sure it did come up on there. Maybe. You could boot that. I think the only other thing, like we said before, was the rope bridge and the uh, yes. escape room thingy, but that's literally it. Otherwise... But yeah, in general, all your other bars on there and all the shows in those bars and entertainment venues will all be covered in your Horizon magazine. Yep. So the Headliners Theatre is your main theatre on board the ship. This is where they've got a mix of in-house uh, mm -hmm. team productions. They've all got so also got some like external acts as well, who you yes. may have seen on TV shows like Britain's, Britain's Got, got Talent. Talent and all that kind of stuff. They love having them on. So that's your main area. Now, for us personally, mm -hmm. uh, the external acts, some of them we enjoyed. There was a comedian who was on Britain's Got Talent. Yes. Came third in 2020. He liked to say that we quite a bit. We don't watch the show, so we no. never heard of him, but and then there he was, was very funny. Uh, like a soul jazz kind of singer. He was, he was good. good. But personally, we aren't fans of the in-house 
entertainment as much. They aren't our kind of shows. No, we, we watched one of them. The actual show wasn't our thing at no. all. We're not, we're not really into that. But what we were amazed by, have they done a, a fantastic job with the stage? Yeah, the production the bit was theater. quite good of it, yeah. There was a... Um, there was a show with like an airplane, it was like airplane themed and yeah, airport travel themed. travel themed, yeah. Yeah, and like the big airplane came out from beneath the, the stage. The cockpit came out and they brought some wings from the sides, didn't they? Yeah, and, and then... dancing wise, there was, um, oh, you know the, everyone knows the iconic photo say, yeah. in New York of them on the steel... The girder. The girder, yeah. They kind of like dropped one of them. Uh, like it was huge and they were dancing on it. It was that massive was good, and yeah. they were dancing, so that looked really good. But otherwise, not our personal preference. No. I know a lot of people enjoyed them. We caught a couple. They were okay. But if you like a theatrical kind of mm-hmm. show like that, they'd probably be up your street. So typically there was about three shows a night in the Headliners Theatre. Now you do need to pre-book a space on the website yep. to be able to watch those shows. Now if it ever does say full on there... Oh yeah. Just go to them at the Headliners Theatre. They may let you sit at the back or, you know, some people make reservations and then th- other things crop up and they're not always going to cancel themselves the off. stuck in the main dining yeah. room, stuff like that. It does happen. Even yeah. with the 710 Club, that happens there as well. So exactly. it's a good little tip. With anything on the ship, really, like with the 710 Club that you also are supposed to pre-book on the mm-hmm. app, just go to them if he ever does say full and just see if there is any space available. Not as soon as it opens. No, Maybe no. five, ten minutes before the show is meant to start. Yeah, let people obviously turn off first. We, did, we then, did see yeah. a couple of people like waiting off to the side a couple the times in the theatre. Yeah. Yeah. But they got there as soon as it opened and it's like, well, they're not going to know, are they? So unless yeah. somebody's cancelled last minute and it hasn't gone on the app. The next kind of main area for entertainment is the Sky Dome. Mm-hmm. Now in the day, they've got like some movies on in there because they've got a big screen. Yes. Uh, sometimes they'll have like, because they've got two in-house production teams. They've got one for the theatre mm-hmm. and then one for the Sky Dome. The Sky Dome, yeah. Because a lot of the times they're on at the same time or mm. there or thereabouts. That so. was just in the evening though. The yeah, I think it, they might have had a Wallace and Gromit thing in the day in there as well. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah. But once again, they weren't our kind of shows. We did watch a couple. They were okay. Same kind of production thing. Uh, they did have some external singers in there as well. Yeah. Obviously, we... these change every single crew, so mm-hmm. we can't tell you not to go watch them or to go watch somebody because they probably won't be on. They did have um, one of these shows in the Sky Dome at night. They had these drones come out. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was good touch. Yeah, that was, that was really, really good. Mm. But it was another place as well, the Sky Dome, that because the ship was so full in the day, it was just... It was absolutely yeah. manic. I mean, all the pools were, were absolutely mm-hmm. crammed, but, but the hilarious. one in the Sky Dome was... And because as well, the roof is retractable in it, the Sky Dome. It is on this one, which it is isn't on, this on the one, Iona. It wasn't on the Iron, you know. And sometimes they had it closed and sometimes it was open. And when it was closed... Oh, yeah, the kids it was screaming just like, in the pool. <laughs> yeah, it was just all, <laughs> all the sound was like bouncing off the glass and you had to walk through sometimes if you were going to the buffet. And honestly, like I've never seen yeah. it. It was absolutely cramped. I couldn't have sat in there for, for two minutes. I'd have had a migraine, I think. In the atrium, there wasn't constantly something going on. In the daytime, there wasn't really anything no. going on. In the evenings, they'd have a pianist. And then they'd have some kind of acrobatic show. It never got advertised. No, it was never <laughs> in the... Um, obviously, it wasn't in the app because nothing other than the Headliners Theatre and the 710 Club is on the app, but there was nothing to say when the Acrobat started, so I think mean, you could kind of tell when they lowered the equipment that they were going to climb on. Sometimes you might walk through and they had a prop out. If you see a prop... Or the sound engineers were kind of <laughs> yeah. messing around and looking up with the iPad and you're thinking, oh, they're due to start soon, but we caught it a couple of times, I think. We caught them once when they were rehearsing in the daytime. Yes. So, so. we caught, kind of caught a bit of it then. But then, other than that, there's nothing really entertainment-wise going on in the atrium. So, next to the atrium, it's kind of in the atrium. They class it as a separate lounge. Yeah. It's actually called the Amber Lounge. And in the evenings, when we were on board the ship, there was a Spanish guitarist and a flamenco dancer. So, they were really good. We watched them a lot, didn't we? And in the daytime, I know he did... um, guitar lessons which um we tried to catch one day didn't we but it was always he ran out of guitar yeah and then i think she did some 
Castanets. Castanets, the word, yeah. <laughs> we didn't join in, but we were watching people do it, and she was like, you know, I honestly, like, underestimated how I thought yeah. it was just basically you went like this. And she was like, you know, Fingers. oh, I'm just going to do a basic lesson with you all. So you go like this. And I was like, I couldn't have done that. And then you've got Brody's pub. They've got like, they've got a couple of dartboards, a pool table on there. There's no extra charge for them either. No, no. no. Um, they do have quizzes in there. Mm -hmm. Also, if there's any sport on, they've got TVs on the walls. They had uh, Wimbledon on when yes, we were on the Yes, they had a big flag the on, didn't they? Yes. Uh, so Wimbledon was on. So that's where, if you want, on a Saturday, Sunday, Catch the football. Obviously, middle of June, there was none on, so I didn't have to <laughs> catch any of that, but that's where you go for watching sports anyway. Right, so right at the back of the ship, you've got the clubhouse. So they have a few things on in the day. Early in the morning, there was like a little kid's tappy toes or something. That was it, tappy toes, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that. A couple of talks. Um, there was a guy doing a basic, showing you how to do like basic magic tricks. There was the odd thing going on throughout the day, but it's a nice place to actually sit in the day as well. It, it tends to be quite quiet in there. Yeah. But then in the evening, I think that's when it really comes alive and yeah. you have singers in there. Again, none of it was to our taste. What's the band called? Pulse. Pulse. Pulse think, is always in there. I think they were in there. Karaoke might have been in there. But again, it was one of them places when we were walking around the ship in an evening because we wanted to get to the Sunset Bar, which yeah. is just... You go have to walk through the clubhouse. Oh, you, you can want go, to go around that way. the promenade deck, but you can go through if you're already inside. If there. we're in the keys, we yes. were like we'd have to walk through the clubhouse to get out the back of the ship, and um, wow, we'd walk through and it was absolutely packed in there, yeah. like crazy manic. And it was another one again where it was like oh, I couldn't sit in here. No. <laughs> no, I'd have another migraine. Listening to Agadu and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, again, it wasn't our thing. But, it was going back to the the keys because mm. it's next to it we just go in there in the day grab a cup of tea yeah and the keys just go sit in there and yeah, just chill out a yeah, little bit yeah it's nice in the daytime it's just nice and peaceful yeah. in there so leading on for the clubhouse like we've just said we walked through there a lot to get to the sunset bar mm -hmm. which is a really nice spot right at the after the ship yeah. you've got them lovely weight views Again, very early on in the morning, I'm talking at seven or eight, we'd go out with a cup of tea and yeah. sit at the back of there and it was so nice, like so quiet and peaceful. As soon as the bar starts opening about 11, I think it was, yeah. it starts getting really busy. Also at the back there, there was two like big hot tubs as well. Yes, which, yeah. Because there is some, some lounges at the side, mm. but it was a bit of a random spot really to, to have yeah. them. But they were two big ones. Mm -hmm. So if you go, if you're at the top and it's, oh, all the hot tubs are full, try that. You might there. not think about them too. No, the they're a bit yeah. out the way, but they're a good spot. Our favourite entertainment spot on the ship was the 710 Club. Without a doubt. Same as it was on the Iona. But I don't know if it's changed since we were on the Iona, where on the Iona you used to just have to get there early and queue. Whereas on this yeah. one, you can book it on the app. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit better. I don't know if yes. they've changed that. If you know, leave us a comment down below if they've adopted mm. the same system on the Iona now. But yeah, you just pre-book it on the uh, app. Now, for Gala Nights, Celebration Nights, that booked up straight away, even though there was four shows a night. Yeah. So that real, if you desperately want to watch it, then you probably much have to step on board the ship and book it. It was the best for us. It was either mm -hmm. the house band, which was the pianist, the drummer, bassist, and the guitarist. Yeah. Uh, and actually, the bassist and the drummer were the same two we were on when we were on the Iona last year. <laughs> Yeah. So we recognise them straight away. Well, they have different theme nights, like 90s nights. Yeah. Do, like number one nights or something. But it's very, they're very good if you're yes. into like your bands and stuff like that. They, they, they are really good. And they also, not every other night, just maybe the odd night, they had a different person. On one night, there was the woman who was on The Voice. Yeah. She was in the atrium sometimes, mm -hmm. once she as well. So they do mix up if it's not just the band, there's the odd person on as well. So check here. Uh, app website yes. kind of thing for that so it's also got a indoor cinema on there with three screens mm -hmm. it's actually a really nice cinema yeah. if, like walking into it it's got like the red velvet and the like lights, lights yeah. like, the, like the bulbs on yeah. there it looks really feels like, old hollywood yeah it's, yeah it's definitely that retro hollywood feel yeah. um, so obviously there's no charge for that it is showing films that are showing in your cabin anyway <laughs> 
But, yeah. you know, if you don't want to sit in your cabin, you want to sit and have that cinema feel yeah, yeah. on board a ship. It's obviously a lot bigger of a screen, but it, it typically is the same as in your cabin. Yeah. The other things to do on the ship, there's multiple pools everywhere. There's a few jacuzzis about. There's the mini golf. Yes. Uh, on deck 19, I think the class it has, which is at the back of the ship. No charge for no that. No charge for that, which is also where the indoor little football, basketball bit is, but it's tiny on this ship. You don't book the golf either. You no. just turn up there and obviously... If it's, um, busy, it's busy. If it's busy, it's busy, but you just grab your clubs, <laughs> your balls there and play away. Yeah. You've got the Skywalk, which is their version of a rope bridge, which there is now a fee for, I believe, when it was first uh, yeah. launched. There was no fee for this, but it's. I think it's quite expensive. It's £7.50 for adults. I can't remember off the top of my head how much it is. £2.50? Might be £2.50. Yeah, I'll... for children. Yeah. yeah. Which, that's not too bad. I think no. it was just £2.50 across the board. That's not too bad, but if we had a couple go, like if we had a go both ups, that's yeah. 15 quid. Mm. And if you do that a few times, it soon adds up compared to when we've been on other ships and they've had them for free. Especially you've got kids as well that are like, I want to go yeah. and they're going to, you know, if you're on a 14 day cruise, they could probably want quite a few goes of it. And <laughs> yeah, soon adds up. It soon adds up. Yeah. They've got an escape room on there. That's also a fee. That that was £20 mm -hmm. adult and I think that was £10 for kids. Yes. Like I say, that would have been 40 quid. If we'd either go to the escape room each and one go to Skywalk each, you're looking at 55 quid. We didn't do it, so we've got no idea of how good it is. But on the last day of the ship, so let us know in the comments below if you've done it and yeah. what you thought of it. Because on the last day of the cruise, we were walking past the reception area and there was a woman completely kicking off that she wanted a money back for the escape room because it was falsely advertised. It wasn't very good. Yeah. And obviously it's like we say we don't know, but like have you, have you done it? Was she exaggerating? Yeah. Was, was it not very good? She was or? saying like it's not what's advertised yeah. on the VT because she was on the phone was it to buyer's somebody. Remorse? So they got a couple of table tennis tables and the game that's marked out on the deck. Is it shuffleboard? Yeah. You know, with the stick and the little <laughs> round thing. I don't know why it says. Uh, some of those were organised events where you could play other passengers. But the majority of the time it was you just play at your own leisure. So like the table tennis, there was a chest there and it just had the bats and the balls. Yeah, but I don't think the shuffleboard was out all night. I think they took that, that equipment away at five o'clock. Yeah, it's pretty early, so you couldn't have a game in the evening. No. Other than that, there was the little golf nets, driving range kind of things. Now, whoever was in charge <laughs> of purchasing the clubs needs sacking. Yeah, because there was about... 12 clubs all together. Yes. So 12 or 14, we counted them. And all of them, apart from one, so one. bear in mind there was 12, 14 one. clubs, one of them was for a right-handed person. Yeah. Now I know, you know, you got to cater to these left-handed people. These lefties. But all the others were for left-handed people and it was like... Oh. Somebody, somebody needed to sort that out. They must have really, got like really a cheap did. discount somewhere. Were they selling them off in Sports, Sports Direct? Direct. <laughs> yeah, I bet they were. But uh, yeah, they've got the walking track. They've got the kids club and the kids areas. Obviously, yes. we know nothing about that. Unless I stick Stacey in on the next <laughs> one, I'll let you know about that. But we don't know about the kids clubs, really. A nice spot that we found in the daytime, if you wanted to get out of the sun, or maybe you've not got the best day weather-wise. Yeah was the crow's nest right at the front of the ship. So a really nice spot on the ship. Yeah. We like sitting in it in the daytime. It was just very quiet. We, bit of music playing in the I background. I do some editing. You edited. Days, play I listened cards. to music. We played cards, <laughs> cards in there. Got, because obviously in the evening, it gets extremely busy. There is a dress code in the evening times in there. So yes, obviously, if you just want a bit more casual peaceful time and just go in and enjoy those nice views in the daytime yeah. just you know of the uh, of the ocean it's a really nice place to sit i i yeah we definitely sat in there so many times yes. <laughs> right so we're just going to cover some of the dining options available now on the Arvia ship we've said that the ship was very very full dining wise that doesn't that didn't affect us too much no. um but then again, you've got to bear in mind that because we film a lot of these videos as well, we have to time things like really well. So most of the time when you've probably watched our food videos and you've maybe looked behind us and thought that, oh, we look quite quiet, it's because we're all, as soon as that keys opens, as soon as the buffet opens yeah. in the morning, we are 
obviously there, so it's not really the peak times. No. I think we did mention a few times in the food videos, we'd say, after we finished eating, we'd say, oh, sorry, the noise is picking up now. It's getting quite busy. Yeah. So, But not everyone's going to eat that early, Arlie, because you're, you're no, on your holiday. Like, We're but, doing work, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, so like the MDR one was, we booked eat for 5.30. Yeah. We normally wouldn't eat at 5.30. We wouldn't 5 eat that early, no. But if you, if you watch the video, you can gradually hear the background noise getting louder <laughs> as he goes through, because I, I was just getting busy. Yeah, because I think a few of you have mentioned on the food videos, oh, wow, like, oh, we doesn't actually look that that busy <laughs> and it's like yeah i don't want to like do a false pretense no it was just we've, we've picked we eating. yeah we've picked tables that aren't in the best spots because they're quieter and all stuff like that right so we have done loads of food videos for separate locations obviously we couldn't do all the specialty restaurants but we did a couple mm -hmm. so if you're interested in the food videos in more depth and we tell you how to book up them all on the app and stuff yeah. like that go watch them but like the main dining room compared to the iona there's only two on this one instead of the four on the Iona. Meridian and Zenith. Yes, so these do get busy. Yes. Especially on your gala nights and stuff like that. So be prepared. It's going to take a little bit longer to finish your meal. Yes. Whereas normally it'd probably take us an hour to do three courses. Yeah. It was probably taking... An hour, hour and a half. Yeah. So once again, going back to the shows, because you have to plan some of these shows, you have to book in. It's all things that you have to work out and mm. time, which... Some people hate, if you want to guarantee you want to watch a certain show, because they have like a take that show, you'd have to be like, right, so yeah. we're going to watch the 7 o'clock, we're going to have to eat at 5.30. It's a bit regimented at times. It could be. Yeah, it could be. But that helped us in a way with filming some of these videos yes. as well. So yeah, MDR, go watch that video. Yeah. We explain everything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, breakfast, lunch and dinner. We did all those, so that was a nice little restaurant for you. Yeah, you've got your two main dining rooms, yep. and then you've got another two restaurants which are included, and that is your Olive Grove, which I really liked that. I thought it was very yeah. nice. We have done a separate video on that yeah. to go and check and that out. And just to mention quickly, if you think there's an Olive Grove on the Iona, it's completely different. This one is all included, and, and the menu's different yes, as well. Yes. There's no pay for extras on that one, so just bear yeah. that in mind, it is different. And then, um, this was definitely my favourite, I would say, is you've got the Sixth Street Diner, which is an American-themed diner, restaurant. Yeah. So that was all included as well. They do a... Again, we've done a separate video on that, to, so go and check it out for more in-depth review. Yeah. But again, you can have breakfast, a brunch menu, and a dinner menu in there. So that was something different. Yeah, yeah I really and liked it, it there. And then one other little thing to bear in mind is if you're on a two-week cruise, which I think the RV pretty much only does two-week cruises, uh, the Olive for Grove... Now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> who knows? But the Olive Grove and the Six Street Diner have two separate weekly menus. Mm -hmm. So there's a menu A and a menu B. So it does change up over the two weeks, which I liked as well. So another included restaurant that you've got, it's more of an informal dining place, grab, a, grab and go as you like, mm -hmm. some parts of it is, and that is the Keys. So it's like a multi-venue dining area. You've got your three food stations, you've got fish and chips, yeah. one doing Yorkshire puddings, one doing- Asian. Asian, yeah, that's Asian. the one. I was thinking, what does the other one do? Again, we've done a video co covering all of the keys, mm -hmm. but if anyone wants to argue that they aren't the best fish and chips in the keys on a cruise ship, yeah. then argue away. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's another little uh, area where you can, like we said before, you can get mm. your teas, your yes. free teas, coffees, and waters, juices in the that's morning. All, well, tea and coffee is all day. Yeah, juices in juices the morning. Juices just in breakfast, yeah. yeah. Then you've got the Horizon Buffet, which is your buffet. It's our least favourite part of the, sh the food wise on the ship. Yeah, we've, we've, we've done like we said at the beginning. We've done three P and O cruises now, yeah. and the buffet has always been our least favourite. Yeah. I don't think it's anything special, to be fair. No, and I know people have said before it's edible. Yeah, that's it, really. It's a edible. bowl of cornflakes is edible. <laughs> exactly, but you know, we've done a video. We show yeah. you roughly how it works. You know, your, your stations and stuff. Some bits are okay. The majority of it. This is our taste, this is us. It's tasteless and it's bland. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I'd say about it as well, I don't like the layout of the buffet. No. I haven't liked it on any of the PO ships we've no. been on. Because I just think it just causes chaos. I just think it's a really bad layout. The only good thing I would say is there is plenty of seating. There's it's, loads of seating. It's manic when you're getting the food, but seating wise, especially if you head away from the food and go towards the back <sighs> of the ship. There's a lot more seating there, but I'd, I'd say 
even though it was completely packed and rammed in there, you could always get a seat. Yeah. The last included option for dining is just a very casual, it was called Taste 360. It was in the Sky Dome mm -hmm. and it's basically just your burgers, hot dogs. There was always a massive queue for this, but we, yeah. um, it didn't, it looked okay. The pizza didn't look nice. If I was yeah. gonna get something, I'd go the keys. Yeah. I mean, the pizza looked terrible. As, yeah. it, as done on every other we Pino went for show we've done. We went for Abba Peace one time and we were like, nah, that doesn't look nice. We, we walked through one time, didn't we? Yeah. And it said rotisserie chicken, but it was some kind of curry. And I got a little pot, put a piece in, I tried it, and I, I had to spit it out. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst thing I'd ever tasted. So, you know, it looked, the burgers look okay. They look like a standard burger. Yeah, yeah. They're just poolside yeah. burgers, aren't they? And hot dogs and, you know, especially... The kids are gonna love it in there, you, you know. Yeah. Nuggets. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll move on to specialty dining now. Obviously, we didn't do them all. No. Uh, we did two whilst we were on. We did uh, the beach house, which is located in the back of the buffet at night time only. It's not. It's buffet in the day, and then at night it's the beach house, which is kind of like a. Did he call it a Caribbean Mexican? style restaurant it's a sectioned off part mm. of the buffet the food is really nice yeah but if you're celebrating maybe a very special birthday or a very um anniversary anniversary something or something like just a special occasion and you want to treat yourself and maybe go for like your glass house or your epicurean yeah. or something it's a bit more glamorous it's just a bit more yeah because like i said it is a sectioned part of the buffet but the food, it, oh, I love the food in I mean, the beach house. We did this on the Britannia as well not long yeah. ago. But we we didn't have them in this video. But have their steak, the steak that comes on the lava mm. rock. That's delicious. And the hanging fish kebab. Yeah. Recommend them all day long. And it's not too badly priced either. No. We pre-booked it. Yes. I believe we got it cheaper as well. 5%, we, 10% or something. I think something. we got about 15% cheaper, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like we paid £7.50. I think it was £9.50 or something. £9 ish, yeah. something like that. So yeah. if you know you want to do it, save a couple of coins mm. and pre book it. So the other specialty restaurant that we tried was the Glass House. <laughs> Food wise, it was really nice. Yeah. I absolutely, we again, we'd done it on the Britannia and, and had a nice experience yeah. on there. So that's why we thought, well, we'll do it again on the Arvia. And one good thing was the menu was different. Yes, the menu was actually different, yeah. even though. It was like, oh, I enjoyed it on the Britannia. It was a completely different menu. Yeah. So we thought, well, we'll give it a go again. Really liked it. Again, we've done a full video on this on the Glass House for more of an in-depth review. The only thing is, and some a lot of ships are getting like this now, yeah. and it's not just P&L, no. is the, in, some of these specialty restaurants are, are basically in or surrounding the atrium. And it just, in the Glass House, it very much felt like I referred to it in the video is <laughs> that we were eating in like an airport lounge. Yeah. Um, so was. yeah, just bear that in mind. It's not the most intimate, personal setting. The no. food was amazing. Love the food. Because it is part of the atrium. People had been get Costa coffees or one guy was asleep behind yeah, in the was. chair the while we were eating. There's people playing cards. So not everyone around you will be eating. So just bear that in yeah. mind. So you've got two ice cream areas of the ship parlors, ice cream parlors. You've got Ripples, and then there's one in the Sky Dome. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of that one, but that's not the same as Ripples. Ripples does like uh, your scoops, but it also does like Magnums, and it does a, a ice cream, tea. Ice cream yeah. afternoon tea, which a lot of people said was very nice. There was a lot of people having it. Yes. We saw people with it. Yeah, because yeah, so. they did like Magnums and different kind yeah. of bits like that. Personally, I didn't think the scoops were as nice. We had a scoop and we also had like a magnum. The magnums were a lot nicer than the scoops. Yeah. I thought the scoops weren't the tastiest. I had like a banana caramel. It was a bit watery, but the magnums yeah. were nice. There's Costa Coffee locations dotted around the ship. You've got a main one in the atrium, but then Ripples does eat and a couple of other bars serve mm -hmm. it as well. So if you've got a drinks package and you want your Costa Coffees, there's a few locations you can get them from, but not all of them do the whole menu if you no. want like the blended drinks and stuff maybe the main one's the atrium one for that so overall the customer service on board the ship was very good now it was obviously clear from day one of embarkation there wasn't enough crew members for the number of passengers Definitely on not. there they were working flat out yeah. like they were literally non-stop so it was it was very good customer service 
and but if you're the type of person like, like us a bit really is um we like a bit of a chat <laughs> we like talking yeah. so we like talking to people and when we've been on other cruises before we've kind of had like conversations with the waiters and the cabin stewards and things like yeah. that and it's they didn't really do that but it just not because they were being rude just no. because they were literally you could see them they were so so busy yeah. and i felt a bit sorry for them really because they were just they, there wasn't there was too many passengers yeah. for them to cope with but they didn't let it affect the service you still had good customer service it just um you know they put your plate down and you didn't really, you never really had a conversation no. with you we found anyway right going on to the cabin now so we had an, an interior cabin, an mm -hmm. inside cabin. Um, this was only the second time we've had one. Yes. Uh, it, it did, let's put it that way. Well, like Kev just said, it was the second time that we'd had one and we'd had one the month before when we did a princess cruise mm -hmm. and that was our first inside cabin. That was great. And that was, it was quite big. So I think it was, it was then a bit, bit of a shock when we went into this one it just felt so much smaller because we'd had that one previously yeah it was so it was a small inside cabin and let us know in the comments below go and watch our cabin tour if you haven't watched it and yeah. let us know if were they just very generous on the princess one or have they been very ungenerous on the RV one yeah. because is that standard is it just very big on the princess yeah. one yeah this is what I can't make me mind on the RV moment. they do two size interiors but they've yeah. got very few of the larger one Mm. So I just think they've crammed way too many in. It, I think roughly it was about 135 square feet. But then is that standard or was it that the Princess yeah, one we're not was sure. bigger than but, what it's expecting? Yeah. If you, like if you've cruised with Royal Caribbean, um, NCL, we'll, all the NCL will know about NCLs because yeah. we'll be on it now. But is that typically, is that quite small then really? Yeah. Or Because it felt it. Because like you'd walk in, and the wardrobes would be here. And the bathroom is here. The bathroom was a decent size. Big the shower. The bathroom was big, yeah. Big, big shower, shower, yeah. But the wardrobes were a bit awkward. You'd be trying to open one door mm. and there'd be no room to move. No. It was a bit like, right, open this one, shut this now to open this one and then move around and stuff like that. It was a bit we, um We take white netted bags and magnetic hooks yeah. and it just, that really helps with things like underwear, socks your bikini or something yeah. like that and we hang them up on the walls so that does save us a lot of um it's additional space for us as well yeah. because there wasn't loads of drawer space we we fitted everything in okay but yeah. it's a good job really we had those bags wanted for the socks and things yeah we don't know where we'd have put them <laughs> so yeah the bed was fine it was comfy wasn't much room at the side of the bed no. uh, especially towards the end of the cruise there was even less room because we'd eaten so much but the cabin steward was was a nice guy. Yeah. Um, again, he was he was very busy. So you know, if if he saw us, he would ask, "Do you need anything?" Oh or, yeah, he was You know, how are you getting on? Is everything okay with your cabin? But again, on some other cruises, we've probably the princess we've one. been BFFs with the cabin steward by the time we uh, <laughs> by the time we leave the cruise. Yeah. But, so we didn't really speak to him that much. But he was he was very helpful, nice guy. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of free movies and TV shows on yeah. your tally. I believe now that this is just the norm for P&O. There is no afternoon turn down. Nope. So apart from them coming in and leaving your Horizon magazine, oh no, they didn't even do that. They left it outside the door, <laughs> yeah. didn't they? Yeah. So yeah, there was no afternoon nope. turnover whatsoever, was there? Nope. So they didn't even come with fresh towels or anything if you'd had a no, shower I believe if you, can, if you ring up the, if you rang up yeah, yeah but they wouldn't just automatically come in your room no. and do it about the laundrette just a tip <laughs> they're very small and somebody did leave a note in the one on our level because if you just put it on a normal wash it's a three hour wash yes. and people were putting them on three hour washes and one day I went and the door wouldn't open mm. and I was in there for about half an hour and this door wouldn't open it's only a tiny laundrette on yeah there and so well. everyone's queuing up behind yeah. and I'm like oh my god God, this won't open and everyone's looking at me. So I had to ring reception and then as soon as they did that, it clicked open. So yeah. just be aware they're a bit finickety. Bit of a faff. Yeah. There we go. So that's our review of our time spent on board the RVA. Yep. Now, I think like anything, you know, you spend your hard earned money on things and so you do expect certain standards, but then as I also say, tomorrow is not guaranteed for anybody. So you just have to try and go in there and yeah. make the most of things. Yeah, so as always, make sure you hit that like button. Leave us a comment about your time on the RV or if you've got any questions about the RV. We'll always try to answer your questions. If you to go on the RV. Yes, yeah, so or if you've got one booked for in two years' time, just ask us. We don't mind. Uh, hit that subscribe button as well in case you want to 
See, is this some fluff? We've been <laughs> yeah. battling this piece of fluff all this vlog, honestly. Oh, it is a little fly yeah. of us thinking it's fluff. some fluff. I haven't been dusting right. No. <laughs> she's been hoovering, but she's not been dusting. But no, as I was saying, hit that subscribe button so you can see out all our new Prima stuff that's going to be coming out because mm -hmm. there's going to be loads off there in the ports that we visit. We're not telling you where they are again. You'll have to wait for them. But yeah, as well, we have just started the Patreon, so that'll be down there in the description as well if you uh, want to take a look at that because there'll be other content that's only for the Patreon. Some extra. Some extra stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's there. Take a look. Don't. It's up to you. But as always, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time from a new ship. The Prima. Bye. <laughs>